I've been so great to, to have you here. Uh, I know that you, you've been uh, flying a long way to come to this conference. I know also that it's been uh, probably uh, some of the most exciting days in your professional life recently since uh, LinkedIn uh, went IPO uh, a few days ago. Right. So this is definitely a red hot company if you consider all the type of um, uh, Sina Weibo and Twitter we saw around. There's a lot of buzz regarding uh, uh, LinkedIn more than ever uh, right now. Yeah, it's, it's been sort of an exciting week, not only for me, but for everyone at LinkedIn. You know, it's a great milestone for the company and a pretty exciting day. But of course, it's, it was just one step in our journey. It was great to see that everyone at LinkedIn celebrated for a day and the next day we were back in business. It's, um, I think it was only Thursday that we went public. Okay. And uh, by Friday afternoon, it was uh, 6 p.m. and lo looked around and everyone was still at work. Well, I'd love to see that. This is what I love about Americans, right? I mean, maybe because I'm French. These people, they, they, do a, they create a company, they raise the, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars, and it's just uh, one ordinary day in their day-to-day life, no problem. Back to business, right? Well, so back to work. So, I mean, no, no, no real emotions behind well, that? Well, I think it was an emotional day for everyone um, okay. on Thursday. And it was a great opportunity to look back on what we've built. But, you know, we think there are around 640 million professionals around the world. And LinkedIn has about 100 million members today. So we know we've got a long way to go. But, you know, one of the coolest things about the IPO, I, I had the good fortune of being there on the New York Stock Exchange with many of my colleagues. But we also had many of our members from the New York area with us. Okay. And we surprised them. We told them, I think, there was going to be a focus group they could participate in. And would they be interested? And the night before, we told them they could join us on the floor of the Stock Exchange. And it was great to have our members there, many of our long-term members, because that's what LinkedIn is about. You know, our, our mission as a company is to connect the world's professionals to make them more productive and successful. And the reason all of us join LinkedIn is because we have the opportunity to transform the lives of thousands of our members every day. So that was, that's why it was so great. So, I mean, tell me, um, how do you explain the success of, of LinkedIn? Is it just because, uh, because LinkedIn is obviously not the, the, the only one uh, professional network, but it's definitely... Uh, the, uh, the leader, the number one uh, worldwide, um, including in China, if I'm not mistaken, at least for English-speaking people. So um, how do you explain that success? Is it just because you were first to market, or is it because uh, you're doing things differently? Well, I think LinkedIn is the oldest overnight success in the Internet. You know, LinkedIn was founded over eight years ago. That's eight true. years ago in May, and so it took us a long time to get to where we are. I think the reason why we succeeded, while others who tried to do the same thing may not have been as successful, is that we always realized that our most important constituent is our free member. And if we deliver something of value to our free members first, you know, we'll eventually find out a way to make money, and we eventually did. But the focus in the early years was just about trying to figure out how to provide value. And I think today we have the, we're in the enviable position of being the largest. We have 100 million members around the world, and that provides us with two advantages. The first is that we are a global network. And if you think about your professional life today, many of the issues that everyone faces are not unique to your country, your city, your locality. They're global issues. If you're a software developer in, in, in Shenzhen, the issues you face may be the same as someone in Palo Alto or in San Francisco. Uh, so if you're an HR professional, dealing with how to motivate employees, those are the same wherever you go. And LinkedIn has the, has the advantage of being able to leverage a, the experiences and wisdom of 100 million people, hundreds of millions of people every, everywhere. The other advantage we have is scale. Um, many of the really valuable things LinkedIn can provide is because we have so much data within LinkedIn. You know, we have data on 100 million members who are sharing millions of pieces of information all the time on LinkedIn. And we can leverage all that data to give people business insights. And that's a hard thing for other folks to replicate. Yeah, I mean, you were talking about uh, the fact that uh, uh, LinkedIn is giving some outstanding service for free. And, and when we were preparing the, this interview of the records, I, I was, but I can share that uh, with our Chennai City audience. Um, me, as a user of, of LinkedIn, I'm still surprised, and I said that in a very candid way, but I'm still surprised that it's still free for me. I'm not one of your paid users, but I have hundreds of connections and I could, I'm really, uh, I need that in, 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 in my day-to-day -day job. And it's still for free. And, uh, so, um, well, Frank, I, when you said that I had them send a bill to you, it's coming in the mail. Okay, uh, okay, yes, everyone, you know. No. I'm pretty fair guy, so, I mean, what is due is due. No, I, I think our vision has always been that almost everything we do on LinkedIn will always be free to our members. Every time we come up with a new product innovation, we almost always say we're going to give this away for free. 
because we know that we provide something that engages and provides value to our members, they're going to stay with us. And we will find ways of providing value out of that. And so, you know, for the earliest, for the longest time at LinkedIn's, in LinkedIn's history, we didn't focus on monetization at all. We really just focused on the member experience. And eventually, we had enough people on LinkedIn that we found ways of providing value to other people. For example, recruiters looking to find talent on a global basis, marketers looking to reach target customers. And so today on LinkedIn, we compete in, in several multi billion dollar industries. We are a significant player in the recruiting industry on a global basis. We are a significant player in the marketing solutions or advertising industry on a global basis. So we, have a, we, we, build a, we built a firm foundation first, and now we have found really important and significant ways of monetizing our, our membership. You said uh, just, uh, just a couple of minutes ago that, uh, if, if I understood correctly, that you had one-sixth of the available market, right? Like 100 million uh, users, uh, and the, the potential market is uh, 600. Probably 640 million people. Yes. Okay, so um, would you consider that uh, the business you are in is a winner-takes-all market, and do you consider that you're already a winner? So I, I think we all at LinkedIn feel a healthy sense of paranoia. You know, as, a, as you point out, we only have one-sixth of the world's professionals, so we have a long way to go. And we know that if we don't continue to innovate and provide great products, we're not going to maintain the position we're in. So we are by no means complacent about what we've built. At the same time, I think we do have certain advantages, as I mentioned before, being at scale. And, um, and we hope to maintain those advantages over time. Well, uh, traditionally, I mean, it was like that uh, 15 years ago when the internet uh, started to, to, to pick up in the mind of uh, most of the people. Analysts have recently uh, criticized the uh, outstanding, incredible, huge, high valuation of LinkedIn uh, today. Um, I'm pretty sure personally on that, but uh, um, do you think that uh, this valuation could be justified by increasing revenues or increasing at least the different types of revenue you could generate? And if this is the case, uh, what have the different new potential incomes that uh, LinkedIn could generate in the near future? So I think you know, we are pretty excited about the business we've built, uh, but clearly people are investing in LinkedIn. Because not of what we've not from what we've because of what we've done so far, but what they think we're going to do in the future. It's why all of us join LinkedIn. We're adding hundreds of people every month, and they're joining LinkedIn because they know what we can do in the future. So we, we feel very bullish about the opportunity for LinkedIn in the future. But it's good to, good to point out that we're already competing in several multi-billion-dollar businesses. Uh, there, are, uh, there are tens of billions of dollars spent every year in the recruiting space. Uh, tens of billions of dollars spent every year on online advertising. Uh, we also have a pretty large and growing subscriptions business. So we already have toeholds in some pretty large industries, and we're growing quite rapidly and across all, all parts of our business lines. It's quite true that we think there'll be new opportunities of making money on LinkedIn. Uh, but the ones we're in are already pretty, pretty darn good. It's also worth pointing out that, again, I, I said earlier that our focus is primarily on providing value to our free members. And one of the core principles we have at LinkedIn is that whatever we do to make money has to provide value to the free member. If it doesn't provide value to the free member, we're not going to do it. So we turn down revenue opportunities more than we accept them because we realize that we have to give that free member a great experience. All right. That's a, that's a good philosophy. I was kind of complaining about it earlier, but uh, for me right now, it, so I, it I, works for my wallet at least. <laughs> uh, the, um, but we, China City is uh, held in China. Uh, it's about... Uh, basically talking, presenting China under a different, under a different angle. Uh, many people were saying that uh, although the Chinese market is uh, huge, there are not so many uh, opportunities for foreign companies to make it in China. Um, you probably do not believe uh, that. That's the reason why you flew all the way uh, over to, to, to attend China City. I'm very thankful for that. So I was wondering if LinkedIn right now has a kind of China-centric strategy. There are already some established players or new players uh, in this market. So what's, what's the deal with, uh, with China for LinkedIn? Sure. So, you know, it's hard not to get excited when, vi when I visit China. You know, the pace of business innovation and technology innovation is just awe-inspiring. And every time I come back, the cities look completely different. New buildings popping up every day. I feel like a tourist walking around. Um, so we are quite intrigued by the opportunities in China. At the same time, 
we, are, we want to be quite cautious in thinking through how we approach the market. It is a very vibrant internet sector with great companies and great competitors. And we want to make sure when we think about the market, we approach it in a way that's going to speak to the needs of our Chinese, of Chinese members. And so we don't want to jump in and provide something that isn't going to be successful. So the stage we're at now is just talking to people, talking to smart people, smart companies in China to figure out if there's a role that LinkedIn can play. And I, I think what drives all of that harkens back to our mission statement of connecting the world's professionals. I talked about there being 640 million professionals in the world. Over 100 million of them are here in China. And we hear from our members globally every day about when are we going to be bigger in China because they want to do more business in China. They want to, do, um, they want to hire people in China. And we also hear from Chinese companies that have told us that they want to hire people on a global basis because they're expanding overseas. And so they think LinkedIn has a role to play. So th that's what excites us about China. But at the same time, we don't want to uh, dive in without thinking through all of the issues. And so that's where we are today. We're, we're trying to explore and become smarter. You're traveling around the world, basically, to, 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 to try to, to develop LinkedIn uh, internationally. Uh, I was uh, watching recently a very interesting TV interview of you um, on the Brazilian uh, TV channel back in, in April. Very, very interesting. And I understood that in Brazil, for instance, another very fast-growing market, you were doing a strategic uh, alliance, if I'm not mistaken, oh, to, to, to start operations in Brazil? No, so no that, it's an acquisition? No, so uh, I believe that was actually April of last year. So April of last year, oh, okay, okay. I'm we, sorry. We, launched in, uh, we launched the site in Portuguese. So until then, LinkedIn hadn't been available in Portuguese. It was, so most of our users in Brazil were only using the site in English. So what I was there in Brazil to announce was that we had just announced the site in Portuguese. And we were feeling pretty good that that would cause, uh, drive significant growth in the market. And I would say that the growth rate in Brazil has ex exceeded our expectations. You know, at that point, in the previous eight, seven years of LinkedIn's history, we had grown to about 900,000 members in Brazil. Today, we have over 3 million members. And it's becoming quite a phenomenon in the country. But the growth there was all driven by organic growth. We really, I, I went down there and spoke a few times, but all of the growth and activity was generated by our members, growing, inviting more people to join in, okay. and really... That's the way we've grown. It's all through viral growth. Okay, so it's not... My, my question was, basically, in a country like China, uh, in order to, to grow, are you thinking about acquiring a Chinese company that could uh, foster your growth here? Or it's not part of your strategic plan? So, so at this point, that's, uh, we're still very early on. We're just trying to figure out uh, what makes sense for LinkedIn in China. Uh, what, what, what products make sense for China? Does it look like LinkedIn globally? Does it have to be different? Mm -hmm. And once we figured that part out, then we, need to, we can figure out an execution strategy. But what I would say is that you know, we, we realize that the strategy that we've used in other markets may not work in China because Chinese consumers are very sophisticated. There are a whole host of technology options in front of them. And whatever we have in China needs to speak to the Chinese member. And that the global playbook may have to be different. So now that you have uh, plenty of cash with uh, the IPO, uh, if I'm an entrepreneur uh, starting a new company, what type of products, services can I develop in order to get acquired on a short-term basis by LinkedIn? So, you know, LinkedIn had, had never made an acquisition at all in its history until quite I recently. Know, yeah, yeah. And then in the last uh, year or so, we've been going out more aggressively to look for companies to acquire, and we've acquired three in the last few months, uh, a company called Card Munch. Choice, another one called Choice Vendor, one called Mspoke. And what we typically look for are great teams with great talent, and we look for technology that we can use to augment or complement our existing product solutions, ones that will bring new things to the table. And so we've been very public about the fact that one of the big reasons to raise money in the IPO was to help fund uh, further expansion and potential acquisitions as well. So we're not just looking for acquisitions in the U.S., but on a global basis. Okay, Arvin, thank you so much. Thank you.